Hello, YouTube community. It's Robert S. Welcome back to Robscure Music. In today's video, I am going to be continuing a thread that I believe was started by Sam St. John, and this is one in which we rank the Beatles albums. And I've watched a couple of the um, other YouTubers who have uh, continued this thread, and it was a bit surprising to see that, you know, some of their rankings. But the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what? When you're talking about a group like the Beatles and talking about 12, or in some cases, 13 albums, if you include Yellow Submarine, um, I think the quality is such that there's very little gap between the top ranked album and the, and the one at the bottom. Um, and also, I think that each of these albums are somewhat unique and I think they have, uh, they appeal to different types of people, different personalities. And I think, you know, obviously there's sentimental factors play into it, but I think we're seeing a variety of rankings because like I said, they're unique. So they touch people in different ways. Um, anyway, having said that, I want to share with you my ranking. Now, of course, anytime you try to rank the Beatles albums, that's tough because you rank them and then you start to second guess yourself and you think, well, is this one really supposed to be here? Maybe this should be above that one. Uh, and you play these sort of mind games. Thank you, John Lennon, for that. Um, but you play these mind games and you, you realize, you know what? The ranking I'm about to share is today's ranking and if you were to ask me a week a month six months from now the ranking could be very different but i'm doing this video today so let's get into it now sam st john and a couple others did not include the uh yellow submarine album um i'm not sure if i should include it or not but honestly if i had to it's at the bottom because essentially this is half a Beatles album. Second side has George Martin uh, produced songs and can compose and orchestrated by him. And while they're in some cases very good, it's not the type of thing you, you want to seek out and, and play. And when you look at side one, six songs, and only four of them are new. So I mentioned you get half an album. Essentially what, you, what you're getting is a four song EP. And surprisingly, two of those four songs are George's. So how does George come out on top in terms of uh, new songs on an album? But uh, in any event, only a Northern song and it's all too much, both George's. Paul contributes the nice kitty sing along all together now. But the real star of the show in my opinion, is Hey Bulldog. What a great song. But nevertheless, Yellow Submarine comes in at number 13, if we're including it. Then at number 12, I've got Beatles for Sale. Ah, yes, I, I'm, I'm among the many people who uh, put the early Beatles and the covers that they do towards the bottom. So... Again, great album, but a lot of covers on here. And honestly, when you look at this track listing, you've got No Reply, I'm a Loser, Babies in Black, Rock and Roll Music, I'll Follow the Sun. Five fantastic songs. Absolutely love them. Then we come to a somewhat screeching halt with Mr. Moonlight. And apologies to Doc Dacus. I know you love the song and you, you wish it could have been on here 12 times out of the 14 songs. But, oh, I just do not like Mr. Moonlight. And we follow that up with another song I really don't like. Kansas City, Hey, 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 Hey. 
anyway, then then it gets back to good times with eight days a week, words of love. Uh, Ringo does Honey Don't, which, you know, it's a bit of a, a throwaway. Um, I Don't Want to Spoil a Party is great. Um, but one of the weakest of the 12, in my opinion. <clears throat> now, I mentioned I, I put some of the early stuff at the bottom. Please Please Me. Absolutely fantastic debut album. I love that they started this with the I Saw Her Standing There and the the counting, the one, two, three, four, and then they get into it. Misery is a great song. Anna, I like a lot. Chains. Boys. I think a lot of people don't like boys. I actually enjoy that quite a bit. Um, obviously, you've got Please Please Me and Love Me Do. Uh, P.S. I Love You. Um, Do You Want to Know a Secret? Twist and Shout. Absolutely fantastic. But this comes in at number 11. At number 10, <clears throat> Let It Be. Now, this, you know, a lot of people hate what Phil Spector did to this. Um, I don't mind it at all. In fact, I think I, I, not I think, I know I enjoy this version much more than Let It Be Naked. There are a couple songs I, I like on Let It Be Naked, and I love that they have uh, Don't Let Me Down on there. I wish this album had that. I agree with Glenn Kellaway in that regard. Uh, this album would have been made better with the inclusion of um, Don't Let Me Down. But as it is, you've got, you know, three hit singles. Um, let, let It Be, obviously, Get Back in the Long and Winding Road. Uh, Across the Universe is fantastic, but, you know, Dig a Pony, Maggie Mae, kind of throwaways, but they somewhat work in in this order. And I, I think, you know, um, the placement of songs, I think, helps this album a little bit, um, not as much as it does with the White Album. I think the, the songs on there and the placement is just perfect. Um, but in any event, this comes in at number 10. <clears throat> at number 9, and a lot of people are going to be perhaps surprised that it's down here, but Rubber Soul, I much prefer the U.S. version of this. I, I would rather listen to the U.S. version. This starts with Drive My Car. I've, I've never really liked Drive My Car. Never really liked it. Uh, Norwegian Wood, fantastic. You Won't See Me, Nowhere Man. And then we get to Michelle, another song that just absolutely drives me crazy. i just not a fan of Michelle. Um, Girl is fantastic, In My Life. Absolutely amazing song by John. Um, if I needed someone, I liked that song by George. And then Run For Your Life, it's okay. And it's gotten a lot of abuse lately, but I think they could have put something better on this album. So anyway, that, that comes in at number, what did I say, nine? <clears throat> at number eight, with the Beatles. I'll show you that track listing. So, not all early Beatles albums with covers are down at the bottom. Um, it won't be long. All I've got to do, All My Loving is great. Don't Bother Me, another Harrison tune that uh, I really like. Um, Please Mr. Postman is a good cover. Roll Over Beethoven is a fantastic cover. Um, what else? You Really Gotta Hold On Me is a cover. Uh, Devil in a Heart. I'm not the biggest fan of that particular song. Money. I like the way they did it, but I don't know. Again, I, I kind of feel like I, I wish we'd had an original McCartney tune on here instead of Money. And I know Joe like Joe Mayo likes that, so I apologies to Joe for that one. Um, so what was that number? Eight. Okay, seven, six, seven. Okay, so at number, I'm losing count already. 
Number seven. Magical Mystery Tour. Fantastic album. But, as Beatle fan know, fans know, it started life as an EP. So, it's somewhat similar to the Yellow Submarine in that it's half of an album. It, it's half new songs. Um, it beats Yellow Submarine because the other half is also Beatles songs. It's basically an album that was put together in the U.S. by Capitol Records. Uh, what they did was they took these, as they call them, other selections, which were, you know, singles. And, and um, they, they put together uh, an amazing album, but it's got, you know, like I said, half new songs. And some of those just don't elevate it, in my opinion. Magical Mystery Tour is fantastic. The Fool on the Hill is okay. Um, I know a lot of people love the song. Uh, when I was in college, I took a course where we were analyzing uh, song lyrics and we did The Fool on the Hill. And uh, I got some appreciation for it then, but not a song I, I seek out. Flying, you know, it's, it's uh, credited to all four. It's, you know, it, it is what it is. Blue Jay Way, as, as uh, Sam St. John said, it's perhaps the scariest song the Beatles ever did. Um, not sure what was on George's mind or in his system when he put this together. Um, Your Mother Should Know is great. And of course, the amazing I Am The Walrus. And then, like I said, side two, Chock full of hits. Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, All You Need Is Love. But, again, doesn't quite make the, you know, it, it's, it doesn't make the top half. So th that takes us to number six. Help. Now, this is a fantastic album that, in my opinion, is absolutely spoiled by the last song, Dizzy Miss Lizzy. <sighs> I, 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 I wish that was like a B-side to a single or something. Like one of those songs where they say, well, we put that out as a 45, so let's not include it on the album. Because... It just, in my opinion, it just doesn't work. It's It seems so out of place. And, yeah, I mean, this, this you know, you got, you got help the night before. You've got to hide your love away. I need you. Another girl. You're going to lose that girl. Ticket to ride. I mean, what an incredible side. Then act naturally. You know, Ringo always gets these type of songs. Uh, it's only love. You like me too much. Tell me what you see. The fantastic I've just seen a face. And, of course, the incredible song, Yesterday. And then you followed up that up with Dizzy Miss Lizzy. <sighs> Sorry, that, that, that just sort of knocks it out of uh, being in the, the top five. So then we get to number five, the White Album. And, yeah, this doesn't show up well. There you go. I took this all from my... By the way, my Beatles box set, and some of these are still in shrink because I already had those multiple times, so I wasn't going to open them. Um, but in any event, the White Album, Beatles Double Album, absolutely fantastic. We all are familiar with these images. And again, I mentioned earlier about the placement of the songs. Um, absolutely amazing job that they did. Uh, I'm glad this was not put together as a single album. You know, a lot of people obviously don't like Revolution 9. I don't mind it. Uh, I think it's perfectly placed where it is. And, you know, to, to have Cry Baby Cry lead into that song and then end the whole album right after that whole 
experimental Revolution 9 with Good Night. Genius. Absolute genius. And I won't even get into the songs. I mean, everybody knows Back in the USSR and Birthday and uh, Happiness is a Warm Gun While My Guitar Gently Weeps. There's so many incredible songs on this album. Helter Skelter. So that makes it into my top five. Number four. Abbey Road. Another amazing effort by the Beatles. Again, come together, something. George is, and, and George, I have to say, George wins. He, he's, he's got the best songs on this album with something and here comes the sun. You, you just can't beat that combination. That, that was George at his finest. Um, Maxwell Silverhammer, bit of a throwaway. Oh, Darling is, a, a, you know, I love the way Paul sings it. Um, it's a song that kind of grew on me. I didn't actually like it when I first heard it. Octopus's Garden from Ringo. I think it's a fantastic song. I Want You, She's So Heavy, and so is this song. Um, the abrupt end is, is startling, but I've gotten used to it. And then you flip the record over and here comes the sun. Uh, and then it goes into because then you've got the whole medley uh, and the, the end and then the surprise, Her Majesty. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So that comes in at number four. Number three. Revolver. Now, sometimes this climbs up to my number one spot. <laughs> This time around, it's actually number three. But again, you know, everybody's familiar with this. And you've got, and now George contributes three songs. Uh, he's got Taxman, Love You Too, and um, I Want to Tell You. And the other songs, obviously, Eleanor Rigby, fantastic. Uh, here, there, and everywhere. An incredible song. My, my friend actually, is, that, that was his uh, wedding song. Yeah, Yellow Submarine is on this album. Like I, I mentioned, it appears on the uh, Yellow Submarine soundtrack as well. She Said, She Said by John. Absolutely fantastic. Good Day Sunshine, a lot of fun. And Your Bird Can Sing. Love that song. Love, love, love that song. For No One, another beautiful song by Paul. Dr. Robert uh, just doesn't do it for me, really. Um, I want to tell you, like I, I mentioned, you know, George's song. Got to get you into my life. I love that song. And then Tomorrow Never Knows, the absolute finest on this album, in my opinion. Love, love, love. Tomorrow Never Knows. So that's my number three this time around. So... Those of you who have been following along and know the Beatles catalog, know the, the remaining two. And <clears throat> as much as I mentioned about the early Beatles, my number two album, and this is always, always near the top for me, A Hard Day's Night. It's an early album, but no covers. It's all Lennon and McCartney. Uh, no Harrison on here. <clears throat> uh, you know, Ringo's, Ringo's not writing anything <laughs> to contribute to albums at this point. Uh, but A Hard Day's Night. I should have known better. If I fell, I'm happy just to dance with you. And I love her. Tell me why. Can't buy me love anytime at all. I'll cry instead. I mean, one one fantastic song after another. Things We Said Today, When I Get Home. Um, and I do not mind the... Um, I love her till the cows come home line. So those of you who hate it, <laughs> uh, you can't do that. And then of course they end the song promising us that they'll be back with, I'll be back. So love this, love this album. And that leaves my number one at this time, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. 
another album of truly amazing songs. And much like I mentioned with the White Album and the placement, I think the placement of the songs is key to the enjoyment of this album. You start out with, you know, obviously Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It goes right into, with a little help from my friends, one of uh, Ringo's finest performances and one, you know, obviously that he's, he's performed live many, 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 many times before. Um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Getting Better, Fixing a Hole, and then She's Leaving Home, which I've heard some people bash, and oh my God, do I love that song. I think it's it's just beautiful, and and John and Paul, the vocal performances, it 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 just it sends shivers down my spine. It's it's wonderful. Being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, and then within you, without you, I love this song by George. I would never skip this, and I like George's. Indian side. I like George's spiritual side. And this has both. Um, it's just incredible. Uh, then we, we have Paul, you know, bringing in his quote unquote granny music with when I'm 64. I don't consider it granny music. Uh, I, I think it's just amazing. And, and, and Paul has such um, a wide range of abilities when it comes to uh, types of songs that he can perform, type of vocal performances he can give. Um, incredible musician. And, you know, Paul did an amazing job with the concept and with the, the songs he contributed. So, I mean, they all did. But, you know, l let's face it, at the end of the day, if Paul was not in the group, we would not have had an album like this. Um, <clears throat> but... You know, you get all these fantastic songs, and then it ends with A Day in a Life, my my top Beatles song. So my number one pick, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So that's it. Um, thank you, Sam, or whoever it was that started this thread. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what your favorite Beatles albums are. Until next time, stay well, friends, and remember, if the music strikes a chord, let it play.